Or to put, yeah. I mean, I agree. I think that's something that I think we're, that's the main reason why we've taken our time to still have a baby. One of the main reasons, maybe like the number one on the list is like still the fear of it happening all over again. Anyways, 444. I've been seeing that number everywhere. And I've been waking up for the past three nights at 444 in the morning. That's kind of wild. Do you believe in that stuff? Yes, but not in like the dark. Como? In the, well, I think there's a lot of people who depend on Elaborate. Like, I'm going to check my notes. They do like numerology stuff. Oh, you, you know don't believe I mean? in like... Even Gemini. No. Walter Mercado. You don't believe in that? No. <laughs> no. No. What are those called? Astrology, horoscope. What do you believe in? No. Come on. Like, just I for people that just watch or are starting to watch right now, because we're just jumping in right now. Oh, yeah. No. No we, cuts, no nothing. We are firm believers in Christ. We are followers of Jesus. So we don't think numbers mean anything? Well, I think God can speak to you. And signs, right? Science, That's how yeah. he manifests himself. Um, but I don't really be like, oh my gosh, five 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 six 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 seven 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 eight eight eight. You know? I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't. I just don't think it's a coincidence. Right. Well, if you start seeing it often, I feel like it's definitely God trying to tell you something. Mm. And if you wake up at four 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 in the morning, pray about it. Yeah, maybe that's God trying to wake you up to pray. Which I have. I, anyways, welcome back to another video. We're just gonna jump in to a, another episode. Feeling stuck, episode nine or this eight nine. I think it's nine. Episode nine. My hair. And so, yesterday was actually Abel's birthday, his sixth birthday in heaven, and we are feeling emotional still. And right. I think it's going to be a, a joyful but emotional episode, but I think we have um, some pretty, in, pretty uh, I was going to say interesting, pretty uh, encouraging insight and in how we can better walk through if you lost a child. But if you're new here and if you have no clue who we are or what is our background, please check out our recent videos in our youtube channel and yes. welcome if you feel led to subscribe hit the subscribe button welcome to spotify but this is uh welcome, welcome yeah welcome. hello introduce yourself brit my name is britzy hi hello and i think by now people know who brit is yeah you could call me brit or britzy whatever however if you call her Brittany in public i will call you out <laughs> so don't call so, her Brittany. it's brit c Britsy, 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 Brit, Brit, Brit. Where'd Anyways. you even get the name Britsy? <laughs> I don't. Uh, from what I know, my aunt. Because I've never met anyone named Britsy. I've never met anyone either. I know there's people out there with the same name, but I've never personally met another Britsy. And the same with Alfredo. But um, yeah, my aunt picked the name. Apparently, she worked at a restaurant, and then this waitress was called Britsy Rebecca. And then my aunt loved it, so she named me Britsy Rebecca. What, this was here in Gainesville? Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's I crazy. Think so. To think there's someone out there named Britsy. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot. I've never met a Britsy. If your name is Britsy, mm -hmm. if you know any Britsy out there, please let us know below because that's interesting. Hi, Britsy. Nice to meet you. But <clears throat> to change the topic, what are we going to be talking about today? I think uh, first and foremost, we have to acknowledge Abel's birthday. So we are definitely. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. What's going on? What are you laughing about? Wow. No carreton. <laughs> no, okay, stop. <laughs> Sorry, guys, because I like thinking about it. It's like, I feel happy. Okay, bye. That's good. All right. Yeah, but I want to be serious. But that's like, what? <laughs> I want to take this serious. Well, maybe it doesn't need to be like that then. What? Serious. It can be both. <clears throat> All right, three, two, one. To tank. 
Tank. Tank. Tank. Tank. Three, two, one. To change the subject, what are we talking about today? I think uh, first and foremost, we need to. <laughs> That's all right, dude. No okay, more. Okay, sorry. Nah, I can't no more. Include this in the bloopers. <laughs> nah, I can't no more. I can't no more. Chill, bro. Okay, 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 okay. I'm being for real. Me too. I'm trying. No, you ain't. I'm trying, trying, trying. All right. To change the subject, what is it? I guess it's tank. Tank. <laughs> that was Riot and Tank this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, for okay. real. Yesterday was Abel's sixth birthday, and I think slowly every year we learn something new about. Oh yeah, that sounds better. Way better. Come on, yeah. Bert. Um. Yeah, I think every year in birthdays and their heaven anniversary we kind of learn something new about grief and how to kind of manage it better Mm -hmm. how to make it maybe a happier thing a joyful thing well birthdays in particular how did it make you feel that it was a sixth birthday well to be honest the night before we were laying in bed already and it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks randomly like the grief i was just what hit you I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe tomorrow's his birthday again. He's going to be six, <clears throat> or he would have been six. And I just thought about all the what ifs, the wonders, you know? Is that rain? I think that is rain. Can you guys hear that? Wow. Let's go. Cool. All right. What were you saying, That's baby? That's our sign to take a nap. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, No, I, I was laying in bed, and I just got really, really, really sad. And I just started crying. Like, I haven't felt grief like that in a minute. And I just thought, I wonder what he would have looked like. I wonder what he would have sounded like. I wonder how tall, little he would have been. I don't know. And then, like, that's what really made me sad the night. What usually keeps you up at night? Like, what are are some things you'd be thinking about? Because, like, for me, man, I stay thinking about every family member and then i get sad sometimes and then yeah i'm just like then like tomorrow i don't know what it looks like right so then i i just i just put myself to bed because I'm, like, I'm not getting <laughs> in there but yeah it could be what like, are some things that keep you up i mean usually i don't have a hard time falling asleep <clears throat> i think i'll just usually knock out which i think it's kind of like a p- coping mechanism for me i kind of just blur out my thoughts of falling asleep but if I do happen to stay up, it's either because I feel anxious of the future. Like, for example, like, it's three years into grief and I'm still feeling like this. I'm, another thought, I'm still not driving yet. When am I gonna drive yet? Is this gonna be forever? I uh, hope Alfredo's happy. We don't have a kid yet. When am I gonna have another baby? I'm 25, in five years I'll be 30. Oh my gosh, my mom is like almost in her sixties. My parents are getting old, but like that stuff, like I that's think about, real. Yeah, I, I mean, think I about, feel like a lot of people think about that. Yeah, and so, that sounds like you comment below. Yeah, I start to get sad about my parents aging, and then just like I think about my siblings too. Like, are they happy? And then I was like, okay, I need to chill. I'm not in control of their life. I'm not even controlling my life, so I just need to. And I literally mm-hmm. force myself to sleep. Or I just knock out. I just put on Hannah Montana and it, like, sues me. <laughs> That's different. Yeah. That's interesting. It sues me for some gotta reason. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Hannah Montana. Shout out to Hannah Montana. Shout out to Hannah Montana. She's gotten me through some hard times. Okay. Speaking of hard times, feeling stuck, feeling like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, why are we stuck? Why do we feel like we can't have more children? Like, why is the impact of Abel's loss? So, to the point that we can't even, sorry, I was putting my shoe on, to the, to the point that we can't even just have another child. Because mm-hmm. for me, I would say I, I, I didn't want to have a child just because I was hurt. Right. And then that's just a Band-Aid. Yeah, to put a Band-Aid. Or to put, yeah. 
I mean, I agree. And that's something that I think we're, that's the main reason why we've taken our time to still have a baby. One of the main reasons, maybe like the number one on the list is like still the fear of it happening all over again. Like the same scenario, the same situation, the preeclampsia. Are you good? Yeah. What? <laughs> You're cute. Why? Um. Yeah, just like the fear of it happening all over again. What's wrong? You're somewhere else. No, I was just looking at the recording. I was like making sure everything was recording. Oh, I was like, was oh like my goodness. Multitasker. But yeah, everything's good. What were we saying though? I think the main one of the main things as to why we haven't had another one is because of one we wanted to be in a better place mentally spiritually in all the areas and we didn't want it a baby to kind of fix us because that's not their responsibility and it's not their responsibility it's not their responsibility to make us or bring our hap our true happiness i feel like our true yes. happiness belongs to God, I think that's where He's the source of everything. And right now, in the season we're in, I feel like He's teaching us how to just love each other. Yeah, and because we've learned a lot, right, right now at least. Yeah, I think God wanted our marriage to be in a better place because we jump so quickly into parenthood right after getting married. Like literally three weeks later, I was pregnant, and clearly we didn't know any of that was going to happen, right? and and then you know Abel's journey happened his death happened and we're kind of like back into like the newlywed season right but with trauma if you know what I mean sometimes I'm just over speaking about the same stuff like don't you think sometimes even even people listening get over it or do you where are you at with that because sometimes I'm like alright we lost a child. Get over it. A lot of people lose a child. Why is this? Right. And that's why we're speaking about our loss because other people have lost their child and they've experienced certain feelings, certain emotions, certain things that grief brings and they're like, is this normal? Speaking, yeah, exactly. And, and I think <clears throat> that's the reason why I mentioned that because our, our goal is not, it's not a petty party always. We say this all mm -hmm. the time, but really to inspire people that have lost a loved one or just have gone through the disability community it's definitely a journey of its own but speaking of being aware of or just our emotions how being that this is his sixth birthday how worse or what were some things that we did to help ourselves okay <clears throat> i think the main thing that we've done in the past that I mean we can't necessarily blame ourselves but blame ourselves at the same time if that makes sense is kind of we're learning yeah. everyone's learning but, but that's why we're giving our own experience right and this kind of goes back to this is something that we've learned every year is you know depending on other people to be there um, wishing other people were there to celebrate with you or kind of putting it on them to be there for you and we've kind of done that with people in the prior years of Abel's birthdays after his passing and we've been let down we've been disappointed because expectations yeah we put expectations on people and we get it people are human and they have their own things to do right and this year we were like you know what I'm not like we're gonna celebrate Abel who else will if we don't mm -hmm and <coughs> excuse me sorry about that one <laughs> <coughs> and if no one else does that's okay that's fine all right it is what it is but i'm gonna celebrate him and sometimes it is it blah, 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 blah. and sometimes it's expectation and then there is also lack of communication meaning mm -hmm. that there is ways we can tell our the viewers, look, these are some ways that you can help someone that has lost someone and maybe it's weird to reach out or maybe you don't yeah. know how to just be there. But I would say some ways is just by acknowledging, you know, what, what can I 
Because I, I feel like in those days, yeah, you want to be seen. Yeah. You, just keeping it real. Yeah, you do want to be seen. Or you want your child to be seen. Right. Like, it's exactly. my son's birthday today. Even though he's not here, I guess the least or the most you could do for me, because that means a lot, is just make yourself available. Exactly. And, you know, we understand people work if it's during the week, but it's like. You know, we understand, but it's, again, it goes back to that. It's like, yeah, people work, but at the same time, we make it possible for anything. Yeah, so... Why don't we make it possible for a funeral? Anytime we lose someone, we always... Everyone's there. Right. Yeah, so send a text message. Give a call. Dang, I'm hurt. Show up at the door. It's okay. Show up at the front door. Say, hey, do you guys need company? What can I do for you guys? We should do something still a celebration and i get it some people still like may feel awkward about i uh, don't know how to approach but just approach just approach just approach and acknowledge the child's name the person's name acknowledge their names keep saying their name because that's something that kind of goes forgotten as the years pass people don't want to say their names no more just keep bringing them up good memories things like that <clears throat> but i will truly say from the bottom of my heart i'm not I would say I've definitely have healed from the expectation of people because that has hurt me a lot. And that's not something you want to put yourself into because it can hurt, especially when people are people. Like, mm -hmm. why do we even myself? I I'm I can't even expect that high of expectation for myself because I will end up failing my mm -hmm. own. And so that's why we need to have a true foundation which is but Jesus yep are we seeking well before I say that uh, yeah I just wanted to say that, that people are people and we can all just we all just want to be loved yeah that's all it is exactly we all want to feel acknowledged and seen and another thing that we did for Abel's birthday is we both decided we're going to celebrate it with joy. It's going to be a joyful day. Yeah, because last year was a little too sad. Last year, it was sad. It was just... But it can't, It was just like suppression, suppression, suppression. Yeah. And I think this year, yesterday, we <clears throat> kind of gave ourselves a time. We took a long nap. We said, we're going to nap. <laughs> we took a big old nap. We're going to rest. It was a rainy day. and. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what we need to talk about. Some things that we did. Yeah. So we okay. Let's start off with the morning, right? We went to go work out at our friend's house. I think that's the first thing I would do if you don't know how you're gonna feel that day is start with physical activity for and sure. something that's gonna really tire you out because then yeah, you don't mentally. have room for that excessive energy. Yeah. That you just let it all out into a workout. Yeah, I would definitely do something physically, like you said, like if it's a walk. If it's a workout, if it's a hike, you know. Just read a book. Read a book, yeah. Get Th yourself. But that's what the first thing we did, we mm -hmm. uh, exercise and then. And kind of start your day with gratitude, whether it's a prayer, writing down what you're grateful for. I think, I feel like that really goes a long way. So we worked out and then we went to go grab a smoothie. <laughs> that was fun. And get some plants yeah we went to home depot to grab some flowers we actually got like a hydrangea bush and some flowers for our patio that we were gonna plant for abel's this mem memory a little more in depth in order to have such a easy day where we could go to home depot of course um we have all we all have different schedules but i made it every every way possible to make Abel's birthday Abel's birthday so I worked the day before that mm -hmm. all day said, 14 yeah. plus hours just because I knew I wanted to really find rest in that day instead of suppressing overworking right which is what you would have you did last year exactly and instead what I just did is just took care of myself I went on a long jog as well after my nap and we had a great meal everything was just really yeah we being intentional yeah. it was about really being intentional so if you have a tight schedule or a strict schedule i would say find a way ahead of time where you can, you can communicate to whoever is 
uh, in control of that or, or you, you have to communicate just, you know, hey, on this day, I'm going to take off. Take that day off. Why, why put yourself through that? But also, if you rather work, do yeah, that as well. Don't feel bad okay. for not resting either because just listen to whatever. Listen to your body. Yeah. But anyways, Honestly. are we seeking ther- therapy? Therapy. Are we seeking therapy? What are we, what are we doing with that? No, but I think we should. <laughs> We're not. I, Why don't we? I was going to therapy last year, I believe, and then <clears throat> things just happened. I stopped going. My mental health got a little worse. I don't want this to be like a sad. sad it's not a sad no. podcast, but it's very. Um, anyways, sorry to cut you off. It's okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. Um. But we haven't both seek therapy we kind of had a conversation like nah that's not true what we have seek therapy i have where but i just feel like it's not meant for me where did you seek therapy whoever you um i don't remember who you oh i I feel like he went i was getting there okay we both uh spoke about uh, I was in therapy last year and I abruptly stopped because I think life just happened and I stopped going. Oh, well, I think I thought I was in a better place. And usually when you're in a better place, you stop doing the things to keep getting you into a better place. You're not in a better place. I was I was last year. But are you? I'm OK. OK. Yeah. Real. Um, last year I was like getting better and so i stopped going i was like oh i think i'll be fine and then my mental health got worse and then i was like whoa i should have stayed and i i'm still not in therapy right now um what about you, you? think is is helpful though like to to go to therapy to therapy i keep wanting to say that to go to therapy yeah absolutely i think it ha- everyone needs it i think everyone mm, yeah really i yeah. feel like it's not meant for some people like for example right now for me it's not the season. No matter how much I tried, it hasn't worked. We even applied yeah. for that one part. For that, I don't know where it's at, but nearby here. And you said they called me, but I didn't get no call. So I feel like right now I'm in a season where God is saying, nah, I need you to really come to me right now. So I would find Christian-based therapy, I guess I would say. Yeah, and I that's mean, just someone. <clears throat> go ahead, baby. Sorry, and that's baby. what I I had Christian based counseling. <laughs> Stop! I had Christian based counseling, and I for those we had a conversation with him, and we were like, we either need to seek out marriage counseling, or you need to go to an mm-hmm. individual counseling. So I reached out to a few places, and I honestly I lacked. I should have called back, but um, I wanted Alfredo to seek therapy. And I think I still want you to still yeah, seek definitely. therapy. It'll come soon. Because I feel like men and grief, like if women sometimes suppress, I can't imagine men suppressing their emotions. And that's not healthy at all. Clearly. For sure. <laughs> because you don't take the time to process. Process grief. And I think grief also interferes a lot with your day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. What are What are some ways that it interferes with you? Or how does it get in the way? I mean, I think... Because grief is every day. It is. I think what how grief affects me, literally after losing Abel, I had like this anxiety that I've never felt ever before in my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hit me like a month after losing him. And I'm still going through that same grief. I mean, that same anxiety. Right. But I think it comes from grief. It comes from the unknown. It comes from having no control. And that's something I'm still working through every single day since Abel passed away. I'm still working through that anxiety. So how does it interfere with your life? And that way I have anxiety every day. But in other ways, like things you do, does it affect you in work? Does it... Yeah, it affects me at work. Um, I mean... The fatigue that grief brings is real. Come on. Yeah, like the tiredness, the fatigue. I sometimes don't have the motivation. Like, I'll have, like, sponsor videos I need to put out. 
and I kind of procrastinate on it because I can't find the energy to mentally get creative and do, get my work done. Yeah. I mean, it'll come. Hmm. All right. I don't want it to be too sad. Tampoco. I don't think that's sad. Is it not? All right. And if it is sad, what's wrong with sad? Like, yes. All right. <clears throat> what else do we How say? does grief interfere with your life? Grief interferes with me personally. Honestly, I go against it. So, for example, it just makes me angry. So, it makes me want to go even harder into my workout. So, I'm like, nah, you're not going to hold me down today. Like, you almost wanted to keep me in bed today. So, then I'll just, I just, it just motivates me more. How does it interfere with your life? Like that? Any other way? It interferes like that? Exactly. Como dije. Does that, it doesn't make sense? <laughs> so, yeah. Just, yeah, like, just it's you. coming after me trying to put me down. But yeah. I'm like, nah, you're not going to put me down. And, I mean, that's just the kind of person I am. But I would say that grief has, and, and that's something we should talk about maybe later into these episodes. If you guys are new here or you want to hear more, please subscribe and follow for more but it's interfered with pornography with me mm -hmm. but that's something that we should definitely talk a little more because that's how it's been but now I f i'm free i could say i'm free from it even though even when i'm saying that sometimes even i feel like even when sometimes i say that i feel like the enemy still reminds me of nah you ain't free you mm -hmm. think you're free mm -hmm. i'm like no nah, i'm free you have to say it you mm -hmm. have to believe it and that's how it's gotten in the way for me but not anymore it's it's really has pushed me and motivated me but no i'm thankful i would say that we should uh have a in-depth podcast episode of the struggle of pornography because that's something that is very important even in a lot of marriages go through that stuff we don't talk about it and we start to lose communication and we don't stay close to it oh yeah and it could go in like a downward spiral real quick real quick especially if you don't talk it out real quick but i think that could definitely be maybe like yeah. the next episode anyways we have let a, us know if y'all want to hear more about it please yeah we have a lot of kind of topics that i'm thinking about right now like how grief kind of really inner gets in the way of marriage and it like almost gets to the point where are we like to the line of almost divorcing each other. Yeah, sometimes. Just being real, man. Yeah, but keeping it real. We don't. I mean, yeah, sometimes we just post the pretty stuff, but it's not. It's not always like that. Right. Yeah, but. Oh, como? No, I don't know. Does that makes sense. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. What else do we? I think let's end it on a happy note, because. It is Abel's birthday week, and I think we could maybe make this a memorial moment for us. Maybe we'll watch this years from now and, and listen to this moment. But if you could give yourself advice, right now from what like let's say right now you're you're looking at yourself going through what you used to go through what would you tell them I'm like at what age yeah so let's say all right my question didn't make sense let me break it down if you could sit in front of 21 year old brit see when did you start going through this season like 19. through the able okay if you can we start all over? All right. <laughs> all right. Let's end it on a good note. I guess. Oh, it's, it's not even. That, is that even a good note? I feel like that's. Maybe a, not. We should end the good note with a mem memory. Like, memories okay. of Abel. But you can still ask me that question. Nah. Okay. So, in honor of Abel's sixth birthday, let's talk about a few of our fa favorite memories. Yeah, let's say him. six favorite memories of Abel. Okay. I say three. You say three. Okay. You go first. Ooh, this. Uh, audio is about to go out so we don't have much time let's see what how far we can oh go gosh. with this but My headphones came off. Uh, one great memory with Abel I would say is 
the first time I had to experience. Um, when we got home from the NICU after nine months. That was wild. That was... That was a oh long time in the hospital, and it just felt felt different being home. Yeah. But I, it just felt so worth it, and it just felt like the... Felt like on top of the world. I remember driving slowly at, on my way home. <laughs> we were so nervous. So nervous. Gosh, we didn't know what was in store for us <clears throat> that, that night. That one. Yeah, that was a good one. I think mine would, the number one, the first memory was when I first held him. Because it took about like two months for me to hold him because he was so um, in a bad state, I guess I would say. So I remember that first time I held them and like the little video you made mm. with the Tarzan song in the background. That was definitely um, one of my favorite memories. Two, I would say when he would just hold his ball and just make uh, his little noises. That's, that was definitely, yeah. And he loved that ball so, so much. much. We bought him two of them. Yeah. Uh, that's three. Three? I remember two. No, that's the third memory. So then oh, sorry. Fourth. Me. Um, that was... Oh, yeah. Mm, my next memory was when we took him to the aquarium. That was fun. To see the look on his face whenever he, like, we walked through the tunnel with the water. Oh, he was like... He said, well, he was even, like, going back like this <laughs> to look at the fish. He loved baby sharks, so we were like, we need to take him to the aquarium. How was that? Was as, like, because we had to carry the oxygen tank, and then we had yeah. the uh, monitor. And the feeding pump. And the feeding pump. Was yeah. that chaotic, or did you even feel that stress? I didn't feel that stress because I was so used to it. Mm. So I was like, oh, this is nothing for me. Like you were Oxygen just in the tank, moment. bring it over. Yeah. yeah. Like we were just so caught up in that. Like we're here with Abel at the aquarium. Wow. And nothing else mattered because we were just in the hospital for nine months. And now here we are. But yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. So we kind of shift our perspective. Especially like, sometimes now I, sometimes I forget. That's what I'm saying. Like we need to look back in those times and be like. We had to carry a lot more, and we were happy. And we were happy. And we would be in the moment with Abel. Not saying we're not happy right now. Right, but we find little things like to complain of, about. Yeah. It's just like what? And it's like just take that moment and yeah, we weren't still even have that mentality. Exactly. Remember what you used to pray for. Mm. But anyways, six no fifth memory would say when. Let's see. There's a lot of good. There's ones. so many. Yeah. So many great ones. I would say when he started to eat by mouth was mm. a very good mo mem moment, memory for me. Just because it took a while. He was eating uh, broccoli mm -hmm. at the Chinos. Yeah. By the way, if you still go to the Chinese by the Walmart, it's still the spot. It is. But that, that memory when he was just... I remember that. He was wearing a red shirt. Mm. One more, sorry. Relentless yeah. Church. I was just about okay. to say that. I was just about to say that. Those memories were just one of a kind. One different different era for sure. That was such an era when we would go to Relentless Church. Every Sunday we would wake up early, drive like an hour and a half. Yep. To South Carolina. With Abel, sometimes no oxygen. He was fine. And he would have a blast. We would just stroll sometimes in Greenville with him. Just and enjoying so life. Good. But I know we're going to have a lot of those great memories coming up. We are. I think one more memory of us when we would live at the apartments and we would take him to the pool. Mm. And he would love, love swimming. Love swimming, love the water. Abel's taught me. I mean, there's so much to say. What are, in his three years of life, I think mainly it's he taught me what an unshakable joy and an unshakable faith and hope that he had in God through his truly hardships. 
I feel like that's the hardships that he faced and he always maintained a smile and I don't know you could almost just feel the trust that he that he had in God he was like I don't know how I'm gonna eat tomorrow I don't know what tomorrow holds I'm gonna just smile and I'm gonna just smile I'm all good Bro, every time he would smile, no matter what day it was, no matter what he was going through. Mm -hmm. He would be getting... After surgery, before surgery. He would be smiling. He would be getting a transfusion. Yeah. And he would be smiling. He would be playing with his ball toy, and I'm like... How? What an example. But I think for me, what he's taught me is definitely how to really evaluate our problems, how small they really are. Sometimes we make them so big because in the moment it, they may feel so big, but Abel's really taught me that I'll never even complain about when our, you know, when we have, when we have future children. I won't ever complain about them never being quiet. I'll never complain about them wanting to go for a run. I'll never complain about them wanting to just go outside and the simplicity because or if they're every, talking too much or if yeah, they're, they're making a mess it, yeah exactly or they threw food yeah you know on the floor of course you know there's still going to be boundaries and right. all that but i'm just saying like it, as far as the things that children do mm -hmm. I, would, I, would, I would never complain about that because abel's really taught me how much how much i've i've wanted that mm. and so to to complain about things like that sometimes i i now don't understand when i see parents in public telling their children to be quiet when all they're doing is just vocalizing and being happy and being happy that's right but yeah i think it was a pretty good mm -hmm. episode this episode yeah. nine we just wanted to really bring memorial or i guess uh yeah, we want to honor Abel yeah. on his sixth birthday. And thank you guys <clears throat> for listening to our memories of him and our day. I hope we don't tire you guys out. But truthfully, I will always... Let me take that back. I don't care if you guys get tired. Because at the end of the day, we'll always think about our son. Mm -hmm. And... Sometimes we may not, we may not talk about them, but we always think about them. Right. <clears throat> and we're just here to encourage. I'm so sorry, baby. Keep talking. It's all good. I'm just going to wrap this episode up. Thank you guys so much. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and follow us on our Spotify channel. And we will see you guys in the next one. It's been fun. And we love you guys. Be safe and take care.